uh, Reza Askari. So he will present 40 Kelvin superconductivity of whole doped blue phosphorin, a dense functional study. Okay, thank you so much for your uh, introduction. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like uh, to thank the uh, organizing committee for inviting me and uh, thank you all for being here today. As you can see from the screen, this, uh, uh, the title of my, uh, the, the title of my uh, talk is uh, related to the superconductivity as a one example of the thermal transport properties. By the end of this talk, uh, I hope we will learn something about the, let's say, superconductivity and uh, particularly and the uh, two-dimensional materials, as of one example, the, the blue phosphorin here. And uh, yeah, uh, this talk is very informal. Please interrupt me whenever you want, you have uh, questions and you want to talk. Today, I would like to bring you up to date on what we have been working recently. And uh, uh, I should say that uh, mainly I am working on the uh, many body transport, many body, uh, let's say, properties of the uh, 2D materials. Uh, this is uh, one example of electron phonon interactions. And uh, this talk maybe is uh, uh, particularly interesting to those of you who are interested in the electron phonon interactions in 2D materials. Uh, I would like to bring you up to date on of what we have been working on the superconductivity in the two-dimensional system, mainly by using the uh, density functional theory. Uh, and also the density perturbation theory, uh, which are implemented in the quantum espresso package. And uh, using the Eliasberg uh, approach, uh, this is the behind of the BCS theory that I will uh, mention here, uh, we calculate the uh, critical uh, temperature of the superconductivity. And as you can see here, the most part of the doped uh, system, the temperature is very high is actually is close to the 40 uh, Kelvin. And uh, this is uh, the conventional superconductivity. This is based on the electron phonon interactions and there's no anything other. We also did some uh, many uh, different approximations here. I hope during the, this talk I will uh, cover some uh, approximations that we have done. Uh, I have uh, divided my presentations into, into three uh, main parts. First of all, uh, I will start off by introducing the subject, let's say introducing the conventional superconductivity. I will try to give you some impression that how uh, some quantities uh, actually behaves in the conventional superconductivity. And then I will move on to the second part of my talk, mainly on the two-dimensional materials. Uh, by discussing a little bit the superconductivity in uh, some different uh, materials, the crystal uh, materials. And then I will introduce the migdal Eliasberg equations and also the including the vertex corrections to the such systems. And also for uh, this particular uh, uh, materials, we do need to go uh, for, uh, to generalize this uh, approach uh, to the uh, multi band structures. And uh, last but not least, I will wrap up my main uh, results in the conclusion parts. OK, now uh, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's start it at the beginning. And uh, I would like to give you some. Yes, I will, I will talk about that. This is, yeah, yeah. This is synthesis and actually is uh, fabricated in the, in the, in the lab. Uh, at, the end, uh, at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, there was a one uh, main question is that what happened if we go to the uh, very low temperature and uh, what the system behaves exactly when uh, temperature goes to zero. Uh, if I say the temperature, just consider the units of the Kelvin. This is, uh, this is what I'm saying, uh, actually talking about. The first idea, sorry that this is not very clear here. This is resistivity as a function of the temperature. And uh, uh, the first uh, idea uh, actually uh, released or discussed by the Matins, he said that if you go uh, at zero temperature, 
uh, basically the, the resistivity goes to the constants because or, uh, due to the uh, uh, contaminatory uh, problem and the lattice defect. And it was uh, in uh, uh, 1869. And uh, Kelvin actually thought that, uh, actually give the another ideas, say that if you go to the zero temperature, uh, the resistivity should go to infinity because in that, in the very low temperature, all the electrons will be uh, frozen and there is no actually electrons. So the resistivity should be go to infinity. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, they were in 1900, uh, in 1904, uh, actually believe that the, if you go to zero temperature, uh, the resistivity actually goes to zero as well uh, due to the, uh, um, actually the lattice will be frozen and there is no any center of uh, scattering process. All this idea actually, uh, uh, okay, all the, this idea uh, were not the wrong, but were unable to describe such a concept of the superconductivity because uh, we will learn that the superconductivity is a cohesive quantum mechanical uh, uh, phenomena and we need to go from farther from the uh, uh, classical pictures. Uh, maybe uh, I should say that uh, the superconductivity is a one uh, particular subject in the condensed matter physics or let's say in the physics in general that uh, uh, some uh, Nobel Prizes devoted to this uh, subject. It's five uh, 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 Nobel Prizes. The first Nobel Prize about this uh, subject actually is given to given to uh, Kamelin's uh, own at in uh, 1930s, uh, based on the, his work on uh, the uh, thermal properties of the system at low temperature. Actually, in 1908, uh, uh, Ons could uh, uh, liquid, 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 actually the liquidified the helium, and then he started to uh, work in the low temperature physics. And in 1911, he could uh, calculate or measure the resistivity of the mercury, mercury liquid. And uh, what he found is that if you uh, reduce the temperature, there is an uh, abrupt uh, uh, discontinuity on the resistivity, and the resistivity goes to zero at a uh, very specific temperature. In this case, it's the 4.2. And uh, for the first time, he mentioned that the system goes to the new state, superconductivity state, but he referred to the zero resistivity state, and uh, actually, for this uh, zero resistivity assay, he mentioned or he called the uh, superconductivity for the first time. The second uh, uh, Nobel Prize actually devoted to the uh, Bardeen Cooper Sheriff in uh, 1972, based on their works in the 1957, uh, in which they uh, could describe. Uh, Mm, uh, the superconductivity properties. Um, uh, mainly, they uh, uh, propose uh, uh, S-based superconductivity in which that the two electrons has a different spins and also they have the, this different uh, momenta. And uh, later on, next year in 1973, uh, again, uh, the physics Nobel. Uh, uh, the Nobel Prize in Physics uh, actually devoted uh, to these uh, three guys. Uh, two of them gave the uh, ha half of the Nobel Prize, and Josephson actually received the another half based on the uh, tunneling process in uh, semiconductors and also the superconductivity. And uh, another Nobel Prize in 1987 actually went to the two disguise, Ben Burns and the Muller. Uh, for their discovery on high temperature superconductivity, and the, for the first time, they could reach the temperature 35 uh, kelvins for the ceramic ceramic uh, 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 materials. And finally, in 2003, uh, the Nobel Prize in Physics also 
uh, devoted to these uh, three guys, uh, Abrikosov, Ginsburg, and uh, Leggett, uh, for their contributions in the theoretical uh, 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 approach uh, to the superconductivity and also the uh, superfluidity. Uh, apart from the superconductivity, also the superfluidity is very important subject, and the topics or the, the topics is very uh, pertinent to the uh, superconductivity is related to the superconductivity, and also there are three uh, Nobel prizes actually given in these subjects. Okay, now let me give you a very brief. Uh, 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 properties. This is a universality class of the various property of conventional 2D system, uh, systems. The main important point is that the zero resistivity when temperature goes to zero, but this is not a, uh, a unique property or this is not a very particular uh, property of superconductivity. Uh, taking into account that if the temperature goes to zero, for the very good uh, conductor, uh, we should actually we should uh, have the zero resistivity. Apart from that, we need the another properties which is related to the Meissner effect, and this uh, tells us that the, for the, uh, the superconducting material is the perfect diamagnetic. I will I will back to this these properties. And the heat capacity behaves very particularly. I will actually go, go to the, these, uh, these subjects. Having said before, the Meissner effect uh, uh, actually related to the, uh, uh, the property that the uh, magnetic field cannot enter to the uh, superconductor uh, materials when the temperature is less than the critical temperature. Mm -hmm. And uh, it tells us that the systems is perfectly uh, diamagnetic. It means that the uh, magnetization is exactly is equal to the minus uh, applied uh, magnetic field. And uh, uh, yeah, in uh, uh, superconductivity, we have two different types. Uh, one type one, it means that the, man uh, the uh, magnetic field is completely zero. The system is perfectly. Uh, diamagnetic, and also we have type two superconductor uh, in which uh, the magnetic, the external magnetic field can penetrate uh, partially to the uh, to the system. Uh, in superconductor states, the uh, the uh, uh, an entropy is very uh, behaves very particularly in particular way in such a way that we have very uh, the entropy is a continuous uh, uh, function, but is very uh, smaller than the normal states because it, it signals that there is a uh, ordering uh, in, in the in its systems in the superconductor, and in uh, temperature uh, greater than the uh, critical temperature, it actually goes to the behaves like a normal metal, and the, in in that in that part the system is, is actually behaves like a Fermi liquid. States. And if you calculate the CV, the thermal capacity, uh, the CV, uh, due to the, this uh, uh, kink here, we have very sharp uh, kink at t equal TC, and it tells us that the system actually is behaves like a second order phase transitions. And another important point is that the uh, C in the uh, uh, Superconductor states is not like a normal metals, which is proportional to the, the T due to the uh, electron conductivity and is uh, uh, behaves like a T cube uh, due to the phonon uh, process, but is uh, actually is proportional to the exponential uh, as a one uh, uh, a typical energy, which is the uh, energy gap. So it tells us that uh, at uh, uh, Fermi energy, we have the gap in, 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 in these uh, systems. And uh, the gap actually here is uh, denoted by delta, as you can see here. Uh, very important uh, uh, property for the uh, superconductivity is the, uh, the, um, uh, is the isotopic effect. Uh, it tells us that the uh, critical temperature is proportional to the, the mass of the, uh, the 
uh, ion mass for the systems to the power bar minus alpha, which is proportional to the uh, Debye frequency. And the uh, alpha for the many uh, actually uh, elements is actually is uh, 0.5. So this, this uh, property tells us that the uh, phonons uh, plays important role in the superconductivity. OK. Uh, in order to uh, quantify the electron phonon interactions in the, uh, in, in the systems, and, and having known that uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, process is second order, uh, phase transitions. Let's just uh, simply write the electron phonon interactions. We know from the condensed matter uh, lectures that the electrons actually couple to the phonons with these very simple expressions. And yeah, this is the second order phase transition. Yeah, because because of the, this jump. And uh, H naught is uh, uh, phonons and also the, the free uh, electron gas. And uh, in order to remove the first uh, contributions of the electron phonon interactions, uh, we can define uh, unit, uh, unitary transformations S in such a way that the uh, commutator between S and H naught gives you the minus H electron phonon interactions. And if you do very simple, uh, calculations, writing the new effective Hamiltonian as a e to the minus s, the previous Hamiltonian into the s, this is the tra uh, unitary transformation. Uh, you end up with the new Hamiltonian, which is the H naught, uh, the system without uh, interaction, plus the interaction terms. Uh, this interaction tells us that this is very similar to the uh, 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 electron electron interactions. By defining the, this process, the electron-electron interactions is this, this, this guy. And if you look at the denominator, if the denominator changes the sign, this potential becomes negative. So two electrons can attract each other by one uh, uh, phonons, phonon between them. If uh, the difference between two, uh, the energy of two electrons, e k prime minus e k prime minus q, these terms becomes less than the energy of phonons. Uh, when this, this uh, phenomenon or this process occurs, it depends that uh, this, this energy. If they are very close to the Fermi energy, the difference should be uh, negligible. And uh, there is a possibility that this terms becomes negative with respect to the, that one. Effectively, two electrons can inter actually to, can attract each other uh, due to the one phonon process. Uh, okay, here we have very uh, thing. Okay, uh, as I mentioned, two electrons can uh, attract each other, but uh, um, uh, notice that the two electrons uh, can be very far from each other. Actually, the distance between two electrons is good. This is the uh, cohesive lens. Uh, it's good, it's, uh, actually is proportional to the density of the electron to the 1 over d. d is the dimensionality in, in, in such a system. And this could be very long. It could be 10 to the, let's say, 4 centimeters. This is a very uh, 10 to the 4 microns, sorry. It's, it could be very uh, long distance. In this case, we cannot say that the uh, uh, superconductivity state is the Bose-Einstein uh, condensations. We have two electrons. Two electrons actually plays lucky bosons because there are two different spins and two different momenta, but they are far from each other, and we cannot use the Bose-Einstein condensation models to, in order to describe or to capture the physics of superconductivity. Okay, uh, as I mentioned before, the uh, Bardeen Cooper Schaefer. Uh, introduce a model, a phenomenological actually uh, theory, in order to describe the the physics of superconductivity. <coughs> uh, just consider that you have the Fermi surface with uh, free electrons. All the states are occupied due to the electrons, actually uh, by electrons, and just add two electrons, two other electrons, which are very close to the uh, Fermi surface with different spins. This is like a Cooper pair. 
And uh, if you consider this, uh, this, uh, this, this subject and so, uh, switch on the interaction between two electrons, the Hamiltonian becomes the H naught, the uh, Hamiltonian of field electrons, plus uh, the interaction between two new electrons that you have added to the systems. And uh, actually, in the general form, uh, we have the, this energy of the uh, uh, Fermi surface plus two. Uh, maybe I should put two here. I forgot. Anyhow, this is the uh, eigenvalue problem. And uh, in general case, uh, we can expand this uh, uh, effective interaction between two electrons in the, uh, as a, a YLM uh, expansions in the general case. But in the BCS case, uh, basically we are just considering the L equals zero and this terms becomes a constant. But in the general form, if the interaction is uh, anisotropic and the f or Fermi surface is anisotropic, we cannot consider the S-wave interactions or S-wave uh, models for the superconductivity. Uh, we do need to expand the U as a YLM expansions. Uh, we have to do like that. And if you do the simple calculations, you end up uh, with this uh, uh, energy gap, which is proportional to the A e to the minus 4 divided by VL. VL is uh, a coefficient here. This is a potential times the density of a state at Fermi surface. This quantity is very important, the VL in uh, at Fermi surface, which is gives us the uh, coupling constant between the electrons and the phonons, which is very important. Okay, now uh, let me just skip from this, this, these patterns. What we have uh, learned so far is that two electrons can glue to each other due to the one, uh, 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 one phonons. And the Hamiltonians in the K space actually can give you that is the uh, interaction between two electrons, and this, uh, this term actually comes from the, uh, the lattice distortion. Uh, here I'm showing the, some uh, uh, critical temperature of some, uh, some, some uh, materials. If you consider the uh, simple elements, Nebidium or vanadium and something. The Tc here is uh, very small, is less than uh, 10 uh, kelvins. And if you consider this, uh, such components, uh, in order that this is the M3x, x could be whatever, but the uh, x is the vanadium or uh, 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 another uh, um, uh, materials, uh, components, the TC can increase actually up to the 15 kelvins. And uh, if you add the, some uh, metals to the uh, fluorine, the TC can increase And if you consider that another uh, very complex components, the temperature can also go up. Here, uh, you can go to the, up to the very close to the 20. And if you consider the ceramic uh, materials, the temperature actually can go up to the very close to the 100. So this is very basic idea for the BCS uh, theory. And uh, based on the BCS theory, we know that uh, uh, if we just consider the two times the energy gap divided by Kb, the critical temperature is approximately with a very good uh, Precision is the constant, 2.53. And uh, there are other uh, uh, values. Uh, Cs minus Cn, actually, I forgot to put the parentheses here, is 1.43. And uh, just consider that uh, in this definition, I'm using the interaction, the electron photon interaction, as a V0 times the density of a state at Fermi surface. If you look at this, this, uh, this table, uh, you find out that uh, this is the experimental measurement. For the aluminum, this value, this ratio, is very close to what uh, BCS uh, tells us. But if you consider the another uh, elements like uh, leads or something, we have the deviations here. So during the six things, uh, actually, uh, the discrepancy between the uh, BCS theory uh, predictions and also the experimental results 
uh, were uh, actually observed uh, by experimentalists. And this tells us that there is something missing in the BCS theory. Just uh, remember that in the BCS theory, all the informations actually collect in the uh, simple V0 here. And uh, uh, in, in, in the theory, uh, actually, we don't uh, consider the lattice informations, and also we don't care about the uh, phonons dispersions. And if you change those, those, those parameters, maybe the theory cannot work. Basically, the BCS theory is the weekly uh, interactions, weekly, uh, actually, the BCS theory can capture the physics of the superconductivity if the electron phonon interaction is, uh, is weak. But there are many uh, examples that the electron phonon interactions is no longer weak and they are strong. And in this case, uh, the BCS uh, cannot capture the physics uh, of such a systems. And we do need to generalize the formalism. We have to go the first, actually, the first uh, uh, prescriptions or first theory for uh, considering the strongly electron phonon interactions proposed by Mikdel Eliashberg, which is a local uh, in, uh, in a space. Uh, actually, I will, I will explain in that what, what I mean by this. And uh, uh, from the time point of view, this is a retarded formalism. And as I mentioned before, uh, uh, the informations of the phonons and the lattice actually uh, is missing in the BCS theory. Uh, so far, what I have said, uh, actually based on the conventional superconductivity, if you wanted to uh, consider or to work on uh, uh, unconventional superconductivity, uh, in which the, uh, we don't have a, a clear uh, theory for that, you need to implement many other uh, phenomena in order to couple two electrons. And uh, maybe the SP fluctuations, I don't know the many uh, charges, the wave process, many other things. Uh, if you're interested uh, to know with this uh, superconductivity, I will introduce uh, the books by the Volovic, which is a very interesting book. And you can find it many uh, new ideas about the unconventional superconductivity. Now, let, let me move on to the second part of my talk, which is related to the, to the materials. And then I will discuss a little bit about the superconductivity on such systems. And uh, if you reduce the dimensionality, um, mainly uh, we are dealing with the uh, semiconductors. And in the semiconductors, uh, we have the energy gap. and. Uh, Mostly by doping the systems, uh, just going in the edge of the bands, just passing the energy gap, the density of a sex started to increase uh, suddenly. It, uh, it has a very strong peak. And if uh, you have a, a special uh, materials that this strong density of a sex could help you to increase the a critical temperature. This is one idea. The another idea is that if you reduce the uh, dimensionality, the electron phonon interaction, the lambda that I mentioned here, it becomes stronger, it becomes larger, greater than what it is. And another point is that in two dimensional systems, uh, we have many different uh, uh, phonon modes. I will, uh, I will uh, uh, describe this, this point later that maybe they help you to interact with the electrons in order to increase the uh, critical temperature. So by reducing the temperature, it helps you to increase the critical temperature. What you mean you have different, what you mean you have different uh, phonon modes in, uh, in 2D structures? I, I, I will go back. So I, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will tell you. Okay. Uh, for instance, in the two-dimensional systems, we have the fluctual uh, phonon modes that in the 3D it doesn't work too much. We can, we can ignore it. But in 2D that is very important uh, phonon modes. 
and mainly it's coupled to the electrons, and it, it, in, it's increase, it gives you the uh, larger uh, critical temperature. Yeah, if I, if I think about 2D materials, I, I think except the flexural mode, out of plain acoustical mode, so all the rest, almost same with bulk materials. Uh, yes, but uh, you cannot uh, ignore the ripples that you uh -huh. mentioned that it, this is a uh, out of play. This is the uh, acoustic uh, out of play mode, yeah. which is very important and yeah. basically uh, the highest uh, critical temperature related to the, this okay. mode. So you, you expect Consider that the 2D materials is the 2D membranes embedded in the three dimensional. We don't have the very strictly 2D uh, members, mm -hmm. uh, membranes. Okay. Yeah. We will see some some interesting things in 2D materials because yeah. of this flexural mode, right? This is, yeah, exactly. This, this one, one should be one of the, uh, this, this point. Uh, there are many other uh, materials, but is, they are not exactly the 2D. This is so-called, actually, this is a quasi two-dimensional uh, systems, like a, a copyright and, and so on. And as you can see here, this is the number of the elements uh, as a different uh, materials, this is a material-wise plot, and uh, uh, and also for each one, uh, the higher uh, TC actually is uh, is uh, uh, illustrated by this, those numbers here. And as you can see here, the higher temperature actually uh, somehow related to the to the materials. And uh, from this, uh, another picture, this is the uh, critical temperature as a function of the years. And uh, as you can see here, the most part of the, this part actually is also is increasing, somehow related to the monolayers something, the components, which is related to the 2D uh, physics, 2D, 2D materials. So there are, uh, uh, actually I should say that the 2D materials uh, actually are promising materials for superconductivity. And there are many new uh, experimental and theoretical works uh, basically based on the 2D systems. And this is also the number of publications just for considering some, some, uh, some materials like a molybdenum disulfide, black phosphorine, or something, but this is not the general materials. Uh, but uh, recently, uh, there are many uh, uh, scientists who work mainly on 2D, 2D, 2D systems. This is one, one reason. The electron interaction with this part of the, uh, this, this particular uh, uh, phonon mode okay. give but, you. Uh, but if you have the wiggles in the structure because of these modes, doesn't that uh, sort of scatter, create more scattering and no, suppress if it, no, no, the, uh, no, the, actually the, the, the electron, yeah. if, you look at, if you calculate the one over tau based on the disk, sort of interaction, mm. that, that, that contribution is uh, negligible. You can simply forget it that. It doesn't work too much. Actually, it doesn't, uh, the, the process is very small. So what is the, uh, uh, the, the uh, coherence length of a Cooper pair? Is it big or is it small? Uh, it's big. It's bigger than, uh, actually, it's not bigger than the, uh, this, this mold because it's, uh, oh. it's order of, uh, if I remember, uh, 10 nan nanometers, but uh, the wiggle, wiggle size is 10 nanometers. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. The wavelength of the strippers is more or less the 10 nanometers. So the coherence length is smaller. You're saying that the 10. Uh, the coherence length so is smaller than that. Mm -hmm. yeah. The coherence length of the superconductor. Sorry, no, 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 longer than. It's, it's greater longer. than that. Yes, yes, yes. So they sorry. can see. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Longer. It's more than the 10 nanometers. Yeah, because it seems intuitively to me that if you have uh, in lower dimensions, you get more easily localization because of the scattering and defects. So I'm surprised to have to see that TC is enhanced. Uh, um, if you have the impurities, uh, you are in favor of localizing. 
uh, if you have the, uh, um, uh, from the experimental point of view, you need a very pure uh, samples in order to have the superconductors. This is correct. Your point is correct that the, sim the sample is dirty or uh, there are many defects, maybe you cannot see the, uh, the superconductivity. This is, this is the point, yeah. But I will, I will give you some, some example about that. Yeah. Also, some of the cuprates are also layered structure. Yeah. So you also in those cases, you will have some flexural-like kind of phonomod. Is uh, no, because they are basically there are three-dimensional materials, and there are some stacks of um, yeah, but there are two dimension. Uh, let's say uh, we can see the two dimension because the conductivity is 2D. The conductivity is 2D, but the system is 3D. And the, the ripples is very, very, very small. Actually, the wavelength is very large in, in such a system. Uh, please ask if you have there any questions. I'm not very expert in the superconductivity, but I'm trying my best to learn something. Okay, uh, basically there are many uh, materials that uh, nowadays you can uh, exploit it as a 2D materials, and we have something like 200 many different uh, uh, samples. But I'm just listing uh, some of very important and uh, very interesting uh, materials here. Okay. Uh, at the moment, I don't have, but uh, I, I should give you one example. For instance, if you have the graphene, which is the one layer of the uh, carbon uh, systems, uh, uh, graphite system, sorry, uh, the, mm, the lambda for graphene is something like uh, 10 nanometers, but in the surface of the graphite is very, very long. So there are uh, uh, roughness on top of the graphite. But the repairs is actually is very wide. Yeah, if you increase the layer of if the you, I'm saying that exactly. Lambda is increasing. Yeah? Lambda is increasing for the system. But if you reduce the layers number of or the thickness, the lambda actually is smaller. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned before, there are many uh, different uh, 2D uh, samples. Is, uh, right now, is uh, more than uh, 200 uh, names. Uh, you can actually exfoliate it in the, uh, in the lab, in, in lab. But uh, uh, here, I'm just uh, uh, listed uh, some of them. The graphene, the boron nitride, the, uh, actually, the forget this one, the uh, silicon transition metal decay kujurak. Uh, oxide interface, uh, interfaces and the phosphorine. And the good point is that the graphene, silicon, transition metal decalcogenide, many of them, I will show you some, some example. Oxide interface, particularly, they can be uh, superconductor. And the, actually, the, the, the critical temperature, you can, uh, they, they have the uh, different, uh, different uh, uh, critical temperature. And uh, I'm just, uh, in, in this talk, I would like to just uh, focus on the phosphory. And uh, just, I should uh, just mention that this material is very interesting and uh, it, they have a very, very in particular uh, uh, physical phenomena occurs. In, 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 in. This is uh, the first time that, uh, for instance, the phosphory uh, synthesis in the experiment. No, no, this is just the first time that, for instance, the graphene uh, actually made in, uh, is made in uh, experiment in 2004. And uh, this is a subject mainly my group in Iran working in, in many different uh, topics, as I mentioned here. And uh, why do these systems is very important? There are many uh, physical uh, reasons for that. First of all, if you reduce the dimensionality due to the uh, chemical interaction between the uh, atoms, uh, we have many different, uh, uh, actually, uh, it, it, it changed the, uh, the uh, chemical bonds for the, uh, for the systems. So uh, 
so uh, there are some uh, correlated for the charge spin, also the heat, if you reduce the dimensionality. In other words, uh, if you uh, reduce the dimensionality, the uh, charge properties, the spin properties, and also the thermal properties would be changed. And also, the, uh, due to the changing of the uh, dispersion relation, many uh, physical properties, which is related to the optical, electronic, and mechanical properties of the system is changed. So you have the new material with these new properties. On the other hand, in the condensed matter, what we are doing is that we would like to introduce or, the, or uh, to produce the new material in order to get the benefit from that. So if you change the, some, some, uh, some properties of the systems, that helps you to emphasize some property of uh, su such a systems. So this is a one way, in just to reduce the dimensionality, going from 3D to 2D. And also from the te uh, technological point of view, that these two systems, they are very interesting. And here I'm just uh, uh, comparing the uh, black phosphorus between the graphene and transition metal uh, dioxide, like a molybdenum sulfide. If you look at the band gap of the, this, this material, the band gap is the zero. This is the same metal uh, 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 2D systems. For the uh, transition metal decalcogenide, the band gap is between 1.5 up to the 2.5. It depends on the uh, different materials. And uh, actually, uh, this is related to the uh, frequency 10 to the 15th, or the visible, in the visible you can excite the electrons. And the uh, black phosphorus has an energy gap between two different uh, materials. Actually, this is uh, 0.3 up to the two electron uh, due to the different uh, layers. And uh, this is a very promising material for the optoelectronics and other, other, other uh, things. Here also, uh, there are some uh, specific properties for the black phosphorus and uh, due to the uh, mobility and for the transport property or electronic properties. Now, let's go back to the uh, phonons because uh, the subject of this, uh, this, this workshop related to phonons. What we know is that in the tr uh, 2D systems, uh, we have six phonons, not four. We have six different uh, modes. Uh, basically, we have the acoustic and also we have the uh, optical modes. And the uh, acoustic uh, modes is uh, actually uh, decomposed into the transfer and also the longitudinal modes. And uh, um, we have also this, this modes is the uh, fluctual phonon modes that I mentioned before, which is uh, related to the out-of-plane modes, but it's based on the acoustic form, acoustic modes. Let me describe what I mean by the longitudinal uh, modes, is that suppose that the Q uh, vector is that in, the, in that direction, if the movement of the atoms or the ions is a parallel to the Q, it means we all have the longitudinal modes. And if it is uh, perpendicular to the Q, we have the transfer one. So the transfer and longitudinal is related to the, the vector of the Q. But uh, if the movement in the same uh, phase, uh, we say that it is the acoustic one. If they are in the opposite uh, or in the anti uh, phase or in out of phase, we say that it is the optical one. So we have the longitudinal transfer, acoustic, and optical. And more importantly, we have the another mode in the 2D. This is a fluctual uh, mode. This is actually is, uh, related to the acoustic uh, 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 one. And also we have the optical one related to the out-of-plane out of, uh, modes. Uh, this is for the graphene. And uh, if you have the, uh, uh, if you have the uh, pure uh, graphene, for instance, uh, the electrons cannot uh, interact or coop to the fluctual acoustic modes because due to the symmetric uh, problem, we have to solve it in, in such a way that the electrons can couple or we have the superconductivity. 
Uh, here uh, I'm show showing the, uh, this is the uh, metal, uh, 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 this is, for instance, the molybdenum disulfide or the nobidium uh, sulfide or uh, molybdenum selenide. This, this, uh, those are, can be superconductor in the 2D systems. And the phase diagram is very similar to the high temperature superconductors. Uh, even though that the interaction between them is the uh, electron phonon interactions. Here is uh, another example for the 2D uh, superconductor for uh, inidium. And as I mentioned before, if you look at the uh, density, this is the local density of the states uh, measured by the STM as a function of the bias voltage. And uh, since th the system has the gap here, the density of SS is zero, but exactly in the H mode, H uh, bands, we have very strong, uh, uh, strong density of SS occur exactly at, in the vicinity of the H bands. But if you increase the temperature, this peak becomes very small. So it tells us that the systems should change from this, these temperatures up to the, another temperature here. And this is actually related to the critical temperature for uh, inidium. Uh, in, in this experiment, uh, in this experimental inidium is uh, uh, actually growth on the uh, silicon uh, basis. There are many other uh, examples, for instance, the uh, lead here, and the temperature for that system is 1.83. And uh, also, the, for the monolayer graphene, uh, we could have a superconductor. But as I mentioned before, for the graphene, since there is a symmetry between up and down, or they say that sigma H symmetry, uh, uh, the electron uh, cannot interact with the fluctual uh, modes. And due to that, uh, actually, the critical temperature actually uh, decreases or suppresses. But in order to increase uh, these this interactions, you need to add some uh, special add atom on such a, uh, mat such a graphene, let's say. It's called the uh, intercalated uh, lithium or decorated the graphene by uh, lithium atoms. And the temperature uh, is become, this is for experimental, it's become very close to the six uh, Kelvin. And uh, this, this quantity, if you remember, uh, I was mentioning that the lambda is proportional to the V0 times the density of the states. But in, in the general case, uh, we can calculate the lambda by giving the, this uh, Eliasberg uh, spectral functions. Uh, this is some numbers between the theory predicted that graphene can be, the monolayer uh, graphene can be a superconductor, and the TC is uh, 70 Kelvin. But in the experimental, they find that the graphene, the lithium uh, decorated graphene or intercalated graphene, the temperature is 1.8 Kelvin. Uh, there is a, a large dis difference. Uh, that is due to the adding the, some extra uh, uh, center of scattering that you mentioned it. Here, we have to add some lit uh, lithium on top of the graphene. So that's scattered the. Uh, electrons, so there is a difference between two guys. For the phosphorine, one of um, uh, black, phos black uh, uh, phosphorus or uh, phosphorine, the temperature for the theory and this is very similar. For the molybdenum sulfide, here they didn't use the uh, intercalated method; they just uh, changed the uh, Fermi, Fermi energies, just increasing by the uh, or. Uh, increasing the bias voltage. So you can see that the prediction by the theory and the experiment is not very large. For the phosphorine, how much I have? Oops. OK. Uh, let me just skip from those things. Uh, this is a uh, blue phosphorine. The sh actually, the shape is very similar to the silicon. It means that the one atoms, the uh, phosphor atoms, uh, and the another is uh, actually is like a zigzag. They are up and down. You can put it uh, 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 all of them in the two parallel uh, plans, 
plants, plates. And uh, this is the blue phosphorine, uh, this is the black phosphorine. Let me just jump it. And if you do the uh, DFT calculations, this uh, indirect uh, energy gap for the blue phosphorine, uh, there are some informations about the uh, phonon dispersions and uh, also the band structure. The very interesting point is that if you look at the uh, hold up or the valence bands uh, uh, in the uh, blue phosphorine, you find that there is a, uh, some sort of the flat bands very close to the uh, valence band maximum, and it gives us the very strong uh, density of states. So this is the reason that uh, our calculation shows that the, the TC is large in the, in the phosphor, and this is one of reason. Another reason is that this guy is ZA, as I mentioned before, and this interacts with the electrons strongly in 2D systems. Uh, let me just move uh, from those which is, are very important. You ask from the experimental measurements, yes, this is also uh, uh, observed in the, actually they made it, uh, in the experiment, and the important point is that the blue phosphorine is stable than uh, black phosphorine. And is that the same structure? This is the same, but the, because they put on top of the AU, the, the gold one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the structure is the same, and uh, the important point is that the black phosphorus interact with the uh, air. And uh, in the uh, ambient conditions, actually, the property of the uh, uh, black phosphorus uh, uh, reduces or uh, decreases with the uh, ambient condition. But the blue phosphorine has not this uh, disadvantage. And uh, sorry, I have to jump uh, because there is no time. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me later. Uh, I was telling you that uh, we have to go from uh, BC theory to the another theory based on the Elias spec in order to capture the strong electron phonon interaction. The idea is that you have the Hamiltonian for the systems, and uh, this guy is the, uh, actually is proportional to the electron phonon interactions. You need this is the formal this is the uh, number formalism of the superconductivity, and the idea is that. You, we can uh, consider the electron-electron interactions based on what you have calculated. Basically, in this uh, process, we are using the density functional theory. But we should add this, uh, the uh, first order self energy by considering the full Green's functions of the electron, but the uh, uh, non-interacting uh, Green's functions of the phonons. But the problem is that, uh, 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 as I mentioned, it, the electron phonon interaction is uh, strong here, and we cannot stop in the first order perturbation approximations. We do need to go behind of the, this, this first order approximation. Uh, before that, uh, if you do the self energy like that, just writing, you end up with the set of uh, uh, equations which are uh, actually related to each other. You need to calculate those equations of consistency in order to find the, uh, uh, the critical temperature and also the energy gap. Uh, you do need uh, to implement the second order perturbation here. This is the one, uh, one uh, diagram that we add to the, our theory, our calculations. And finally, you can calculate the uh, energy gap respect to the frequency and if this, this, this energy gap goes to zero, it tells us that uh, we have in the, some special critical temperature. This graph is based on the uh, first order uh, self energy, but the second one is related to the theory that we also implemented the second order uh, self energy. And finally, what we have is that if you change the energy gap respect to the valence band maximum from top going to the hold of uh, uh, systems. At the, big, at the very vicinity of the uh, band edge, we have the TC, this is very large, is 100 kelvins. 
but maybe our theory is not accurate enough in order to capture that. But if you increase the, it going blue, the uh, Fermi energy, uh, actually the temperature is becomes more or less around 40. That this is the number that uh, we believe that the our theory and everything is, works well. And uh, our suggestion, our prediction is that the, uh, oh, we should have the superconductivity with the uh, critical temperature around 40 Kelvin in such a systems. And this is the full safe consistent approach, including the uh, vertex corrections. Uh, there are many other approximations that there is no vertex or there is some, uh, in order to take the integrate, integ in, in, integrand, you do the some approximation like a constant dose in order to put out the d density of a set from the integrations. And also there are some uh, predictions for the uh, critical temperatures given by these expressions. This is based on the Allen uh, Dynes. And uh, those uh, numbers is uh, different a little bit from the other fully self-consistent uh, calculations. OK, uh, let me just uh, summarize my, my, my uh, conclusion in such a way that if you have the system that is buckled or buckled in 2D systems, you should have uh, superconductivity with the higher critical temperature. And uh, uh, yeah, this is the main, main, main idea. And thank you for your attention. This Van Hove scenario for this. Uh, uh, sorry, what is? Van Hove scenario. Van Hove singularity. Van Hove scenario of superconductivity for high superconductivity for non Fermi liquids. So, okay. since you have a quartic energy momentum dispersion, uh, do you think that uh, your material can be, that this blue phosphorin can be uh, explained by this Van Hove scenario? Uh. I'm not sure because the, f the main phenomena here is the electron photon interactions, and you do need uh, to consider such a unconventional uh, properties of the, these simple uh, systems. Uh, in such a systems, uh, we do not have very, uh, let's say, particular fluctuations somehow related to this, this, this phenomena. The, simple, the system is very simple. And we have just uh, electrons. And uh, I think, actually, I didn't uh, mention it. I just uh, uh, escaped from the, this point. Uh, there, are, there is a, some experimental measurements for the blue phosphorine, uh, for, the, uh, for the black phosphorine, sorry, that, uh, that tells you that the, the system becomes uh, superconductor based on the electron photon interactions. So I'm not sure we do need another mechanism such a such a point that you mentioned. Yeah. Anyhow, we should talk a little bit later. As far as I remember, there were uh, some materials with quartic dispersion. Is it the case in blue phosphorus? And at that case, that Panova uh, scenario. Uh, there are some ideas uh, exactly that you mentioned for the uh, graphene in order to add the. Uh, 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 iron on top of that, and maybe that's, that 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 uh, structures you need to uh, deal with this this theory. But here we just have the phosphorin without anything, and just using the uh, bias voltage. The, simp the system is very simple. But yeah. That is a semiconductor, but in order to have this uh, superconductor, you need to increase the number of the electrons, basically, in such an experimental, by increasing, uh, in order to increase the number of el electrons, they actually use the uh, bias voltage. The, they need to reach to the 10 to the 14th centimeter minus 2 density of electrons in order to have the 
uh, superconductivity. And also, that actually, this is an experimental measurement for the, those uh, uh, transition metal decarbonate materials. states that uh, vertex correction is irrelevant. Yeah. What makes it uh, very important here that you find very um, Actually, basically, uh, Migdal Eliasberg theory, based on the ideas that you just stop in the first order self energy, uh, if the land, not the lambda, or just the, uh, let's say, the effective interaction between the electrons and the holes is not very strong. But here we reach the, this lambda, lambda it becomes between the two up to the three. So in this case, you need to go further for the self energy. We just in, uh, actually implemented the second order uh, self energy. So we actually go behind of the uh, migdal Ehrlichberg equations. On the other hand, I mentioned it that in the whole cases, uh, the bands is more or less is the flat bands. In the, for the flat bands, it means that the effective mass of the particle or quasi particle is large, and the, for the m divided by the mass of the ions or the atoms is not very small. So you do need to go to consider the another uh, diagram. But the, the approach is very uh, difficult, so we stop up the second one. Maybe we should inc include also the third one, maybe change the results. But the good point is that if you ignore uh, the vertex correction, the temperature is, let's say, uh, 60, but you inc include the vertex, it becomes 40. It doesn't change dramatically. Actually, it reduces. But uh, is in order of is in the same order. So you had the band structure of uh, was it blue phosphorine that has a band uh, yeah. valence band yeah. large density of states at the valence band top. Yes. So uh, is it possible that this would be uh, have an instability and deform? No, there is no instability because we calculate the plasma mode, the phonon mode, and there is no imaginary part of the, uh, the, 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 the system. This is right. the, uh, uh, they are yeah, actually yeah. They are real, and uh, there is no imaginary part for that. Uh, yeah. yeah, but you could have a, a supercell with large, lar small deformation. So, for example, you double the cell with a lower symmetry, uh, which could be maybe more stable than this. Is that a possibility? I mean, have you looked at that? Kind of charge density. Charge density wave kind of instability, that kind. Usually when your density of states near the Fermi level is very large, uh -huh. you are susceptible to uh, instabilities. Um, so, like if you had it on the uh, gold substrate, you had it quickly, you could uh, get the deformation. But you said yes. it's because it's on gold. Yeah, actually there is no uh, deformation. This is the, the, sh the structure or the shape of the, sorry, the, sh the patterns of the film or STM films. Uh, doesn't work, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, this one. Yeah, here you cannot, you cannot see the uh, structure of the hexagonal here. Uh, apart from the, this hexagonal, which, which is related to the uh, phosphorine or blue phosphorine here, you have another structure. This structure actually comes from the gold, from gold. for the substrate. So I'm saying a substrate which with a weak interaction could easily cause this deformation. Yeah. So I'm saying maybe just even in the suspended case, you can have a charge density wave instability, a pile type instability. So maybe that's something uh, worth looking at, I'm just comment. Yeah, I have not talked about uh, th this point. This is a very good uh, this question, but uh, we have to look at it. I don't know. I don't have the uh, correct answer. Okay, we have more questions. Yeah, what is the value? Where is the theoretical and experimental uh, critical temperature values, right? Yes. And uh, I noticed that 
for all those that had this theoretical balance in my smaller. Life. In theoretical one is higher, yes? Uh, what do you think about that? I mean, any reason? Because it is not for material, but. No, this is due to the scattering. That's in the theory we don't uh, consider. For, for instance, I don't know if there is a, some uh, impurities or uh, uh, defect or everything can actually uh, scatter or to break the uh, copper pairs. And uh, uh, that uh, causes the uh, temperature, the critical temperature uh, becomes smaller. So this, this is the reason. The, the theoretical uh, predictions uh, is higher because we consider very clean system, very perfect systems. But in the experimental, the system is not very clear, as we thought in the experiment, in the over calculation. I mean, if you increase the number of theoretical approaches, I mean, maybe it's possible to, to have some experimental values. Uh, the important point is that, first of all, you predict that the, these systems could be uh, superconductor. This is one step. Another point is that uh, the order of the uh, critical temperature that you predict is very close to experiment. You say that it's 20, but in the experiment, they found out that it's uh, 10 Kelvin. So is it that in, in that stage, it's perfect, in my opinion. It's just a small comment uh, about this. Uh, charge density wave? Charge density wave, okay. yes. Uh, okay. In these structures, uh, in this group 5A elements, actually, in all the, the, uh, all the uh, column, there's this, uh, uh, how to call it, Mexican hat shape dispersion. Uh -huh. And also in other materials, uh, three, six semiconductors, uh, yeah. they are known to be stable. So this uh, Fanova sing singularity uh, retains, it exists there. Uh, so it's stable, that's what I would like to say. Uh, yeah, in these systems, uh, uh, for instance, for the uh, transition metal decay joint, if you look at these this, this elements, these particles, they are the, uh, the, the uh, stable phases is the charge and the wave for such a system. But in that case, actually, uh, they cannot be uh, superconductor. Yeah, but your point is correct. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Electronic thermal conductivity measurements in graphene. Okay, let me see.